that's what I was coming to you see. So the notion yeah. of being Ibibio yeah. or being Ibu or how is that fool any or Yoruba is a very recent phenomenon in the history of Nigeria. Nigerians knew themselves in terms of their place of origin. I am from Calabar. Not I am ethic. And I'm from Calabar doesn't mean I was, doesn't mean I was born in Calabar. It means I have lived in Calabar. So it's very easy to call me a Calabar man. Not because my parents were from Calabar, but because I have lived there. In other words, there was no fixity in terms of ethnicity in many parts of Africa. The fixity came with the colonial period when they decided that, uh, well, to administer you, you must be, you must have a chief first, like in this area, you must have a chief in the first instance. And chiefs were not there. So you had to create chiefs. You don't create chiefs, you create chiefs for people. So you are a BBO. So because you are a BBO, you must have your chief and so on. So it was very easy for to relate where they were from, the idea of where they were from, to the idea of where they passed through or where they where they lived before departing to the new world. So it's not, it's not surprising they have already been. In fact, in Oro, in Oro itself, we still have such a concept uh, called Iviora. You call it what? Iviora. Iviora. Iviora means when you do something which is unacceptable, <laughs> another man will call you Ivi. Of Ivi. In other words, you've done something which that was in the past and not now because other people are like everybody else now. For example, in the past it was very difficult to say another man's doom because they will kill your life, they bury your life. So if another man still they say Ibi, they will say, oh, you're blood in you. That's why you're stealing. But it was so common for other people to have several women around them. So when it's where, uh, but that is our own tradition now. But stealing, no. So even amongst us, we use such terms as Ibi Oro, or in our own, you were very elegant, dressed well, put your pull that cap on. They call you an ethnic man. They forgot her. Okay. There was a chief, uh, Paramount Lula, who died a few years ago. He went to England and came back and was speaking English. You know, they called him a royal Europe. That's <laughs> has become European. So the ethnic stereotypes in a way. Yes, the, the ethnic stereotypes are not uh, that. But what it means, those slaves must have passed through Oro on their way in your land. Mm -hmm. The bells, you are right. Because as I try to say, this whole area, uh, again, you can borrow the American back then, American port, has been a meeting point of cultures. What Jill was trying to talk about the other day. It's been a meeting point of cultures. So, Egbo, for example, which typically we do, wasn't played by the Oron people until the 1930s. And when it came into Oro, it wasn't used as an instrument of government. In fact, it had no value beyond entertainment. It was something that children like ourselves, you know, in the 50s, 60s, you played around, you carried around with the bell and, you know, terrorized people and so on. It had no value beyond that entertainment. And that uh, it wasn't an instrument of, of, it had no real social control value which it best still had. But it was very easy to borrow some of the things, you know, bells. You know. Uh, bells are quite nice. So you can see those bells there. While typically a bell will have only one bell at the back, a big bell at the back. So what I'm saying is that the influences here, the converging influence, the mutually reinforcing influence, we have to take them into consideration to interpret anything that left this area. Don't, 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 don't get stuck with this is BBO. This is uh, ethic. This is uh, because we're living in a lot of trouble. Because after some time, even That's here. That's a 20th century concept. Yes. After some time, the things begin to melt. These are the, as I said, 20th century. Here, for example, you never had the core 
and the FA quarter. No. Until 1952. Nobody cared whether they're ethnic or poor. They intermarried with the food and so on. But 52, the Eastern Nigerian government created a house of chiefs. And uh, the poor wanted to have their chief represented too. The food wanted to have their chief represented. But the urban of Karabakh was a natural. So we're no longer ethnic. We know we're not uh, we're not ethnic. So the first time in 52. The paramount ruler of the Kwan leader was made a member of the House of, of Eastern Nigerian House of Chiefs. So it is, it is political pressures. Mm. And you were here when this last one happened about who owns Calabar and uh, who should, you know, those are, they really have no cultural value. They, they, as I said in that meeting, the only way to understand Calabar is in its metropolitan nature. Outside that, you cannot understand Calabar at all. I don't care who owns it, all of us own it. It's, 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 it's a reply to it. But in the traditional man, you can't speak like that. So there's another Oron near Isangale. There's Oron, there's and Oron. If we your people there, yes. how do we know that this is not the one the Cubans are talking about? No. They, don't, they would know. There's an Oron near Isangale because Oron people know. As probably you have read about, or you know, I should have told you. Up to 1956, people of Usaradi used to come to Oro, Oron, the Oron here. People of Oron used to go to Usaradi for that joint meeting. Usaradi, Odon, Ibno, and uh, what we now call Eastern Obolo, the Obolo people. Obolo people in the river state now. Those are one people. Okay. So it, it, it's not. The review phenomenon. <laughs> in fact, in the fifties, when I came to Canada, for example, I came to Canada in fifty-five to go to school. When when I came to Canada, there were more Igbo people in Calabar than the people. There were more Igbo people in Calabar than the Libyan people. So there is a very recent phenomenon. If I one can argue that the creation of the state. That attracted a lot of people down. So the same thing with Oran. There are more Igbo people in Oran than Igbo, than uh, Igbo people. Mm -hmm. Market master in Oran between fifty six and sixty was an Igbo man. So the Igbo in Isangale is a recent. It's a recent thing. Yes, yeah. they've migrated. Even if you go to Oban now, the whole of this area from here, above you down. If you take the census. There are probably more Igbo than uh, people from this area. That's why you have problems in those areas. Uh, if they want to choose a chief, a village chief, it's always problematic. Because really, most of the population is non ethnic or non poor, non a non a non a vote, mm. I leave you. So it's, um, it's, it's a recent phenomenon in the region. Yeah. So by 1830s, Abakwa was established apparently. Yes. And many of the major lineages were already founded. Yes. So by that time, was the concept of Old Calabar already extended into. Yes, it had gone beyond. Umon. Yes, it had or gone beyond. It had entered Umon, it had entered Oron, it had entered part of Bakasi. Yeah. I hope you have read. Uh, Written by an ethic, the diary of Antra Duke. Yeah. Okay. Because the point is made there. By Antra Duke's time, I think that was 1780 something, by Antra Duke's time, the notion of old Calabar had gone beyond okay. the ethic city states to those areas, Bakasi, Umon, Oron. Yeah. That, that was old Calabar. Yeah. Uh, that's why uh, one of the kings, Basi, whatever his name was. He didn't claim that he was the king of all black men mm, yeah. and signed a treaty. The other one was king of white men. <laughs> <laughs> signed a treaty. Well, the queen then was uh, for all white men, so the king then was the king of England was for all white men, so he was for all black men. He signed it that way. Mm. King of all black men. The, 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 the story of Calabar is still to be told mm. is the truth. I believe so. Because of resistance 
or the unwillingness of people here to even talk about it, to even commit themselves to it. I have problems trying to get an ethic person to write on the history of private rights. It's very problematic. Aye, whom you have quoted and you've seen, he's not a historian, Aye is a geographer. But he was the only one who was stupid enough, let me put it that way, to venture into the area. I made him a lot of enemies. They, didn't, they couldn't make Aye chief until very recently. When the man had retired from the because he came out, he was teaching for me in the history department. And I was still dealing with that, the head of his guy. I brought him there. They wouldn't make him a chief. Because they think the materials are so controversial. Yeah. And uh, the first one I trained, Dr. Anayu, she swore she, she would never teach. She wrote the thesis on these ethnic political agents of all Canada. Swore she would never teach. She's in the civil service. The second one I trained, one of Colonel Young, he died the very year that he was completing his thesis. Mm. The third one was this Akoda, who, is, uh, who wrote the thing on uh, Old Calabar. Uh, I'm sure you've seen her, Winifred Akoda. But even that one is married to a million person. That one took me four years to convince. Every time she went out to interview, she would come back and cry. She did not have me to come to the ship. I said, well, they are fortunate. They are married to a billion person. So you don't know how to do the work. So really, 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 we've not gone beyond the, what a year wrote and what a year gonna come. He was also another social commentator. Not even, I wouldn't even say he was a good one for that matter. He died recently. Uh, As a matter of fact, he tried to do something. Uh, Monday Noir, mm. Professor Noir, who was my student at Howard University, I suppose his his thesis at Howard University. Mm -hmm. They have refused to follow the thing, the ethics of the Europeans. Because even in that context of the ethic and the Europeans, there's a lot of story untold. A lot of Mainly, skeletons in the closet. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mainly because all the scholars I know, most of us have confined ourselves to the English records. Yeah. We've not used the Spanish records, we have not used the Portuguese records. Yeah. They have not used the German records, they have not used the French records. Significantly, reconstructing the history of this area. So there are lots of uh, problems here and there in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, a lot of gaps in every history. That's why they can afford to jump from Palestine to <laughs> you. Uh, but in, in your book you wrote that Oro, Oro was never a, a place for departure of slaves, at least on a grand scale. No, so, not, not it was a transit point, not departure to the Atlantic. Right. So they would have left to Calabar. Yes, they left to Calabar. Yeah. They left to Calabar. So but forget if you left it too. Mm. If you leave it too, that's one thing I would have done. I would have been very useful for you. Somebody did it. To what? Who did it? Who did it? Who did it? Uh, I think it's a uh, love joy did it. To take a boat ride. Yeah from the Cross River Bridge on the Oroni, on the Calabai to road. Okay. Just take a boat ride down. Mm. My boat. Edel Patton. Edel mm. Patton was one of my students in uh, Wisconsin. Mm. He's teaching at, the, at uh, Iowa now. He was here to give a lecture for the American historian. Mm. Uh, he took that ride. If you start from it, you cannot get to Calabai, let's pass through Oroni. Yeah. So all the I slaves. I from Calabar to Oron. Okay. Yeah. All the slaves had to come that way mm. to here. You, know, you have to pass through a swallow, what we call a swallow, which was the real Oron port. That's why it's called a swallow. That is the beach of Oron people. You have to pass through there before you get into Calabar. Mm. It was a transit point. It wasn't a, a point of departure. Mm. And the irony is that when they came here, they now had to go back. When the European ships came, since they fixed that monopoly, yeah. they load the ships and go back the same route, yeah. pass through Oran again before yeah. getting into the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. I think there's a lot of politics in the, in the region because they call in Calabar should have been building Oran. Yeah. That's what the colonial yeah, masters yeah. decided a long time ago, but we never were strong enough yeah. to uh, in fact there's a standing joke here that while others were struggling for political things, Oran people were struggling for scholarship. Yeah. There was a time that most of the professors from the area came from that small place called Oran. Yeah, okay. So we. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a story. 